Hello back again on the Top Recap channel. This time I will tell a movies entitled, Hunt to Kill. Let's get straight into the storyline. The story begins by showing two policemen named Lee and Rhodes, who are staking out the headquarters of a drug cartel group. But before they take action, Lee is seen giving a watch to Rhodes as a gift and a memento for him. Son of a bitch, a watch. Not just any watch. After that, they began to ambush, but apparently, they did not find a single person who was there. Then, the two left the headquarters and continued checking the situation outside. But it turned out that the group of criminals was hiding in a secret room inside the headquarters. A group of criminals then quietly came out of their hiding place and managed to shoot Lee. Hey! Rhodes, who knew that quickly, immediately counterattacked. In the end, Rhodes finished them and only one criminal remained. Unfortunately, this criminal managed to stab Rhodes and turn the situation around, and was about to finish off Rhodes, but Lee managed to finish him off first. Then Lee immediately told Rhodes to leave because soon the place would explode. In the end, Rhodes survived the explosion, but unfortunately, Lee had to die on the spot because he was hit by an explosion. Four months have passed, and now the scene switches to the city of Nevada, where police officers are seen trying to hunt down the robbers who have just finished acting. But at that time, the police signal was successfully hacked by a hacker, resulting in the police losing track of them that night. Sound in the world. It is known that these robbers managed to rob $10 million from a casino in the city. We were also told that the robbers were led by a man named Banks, while the robbery's mastermind was an old man named Lawson. What do you want? A bloody medal? Spec would be nice. Oh, bite me. <laughs> After carrying out the action, Lawson immediately left the place to burn the car they used to eliminate traces. Shortly after Lawson left, Banks and his members immediately opened the bag of their loot, but instead of the money they found, an active bomb was waiting for them. They also couldn't get out of the place because the only way out had been locked by Lawson. They also realized that they had been framed by Lawson, even though all the money from their robbery was also in Lawson's hands. Meanwhile, Banks tries to defuse the bomb. Meanwhile, Lawson, who had managed to control all the robbery money, then tried to detonate the bomb trigger via his mobile phone, but unexpectedly, Banks managed to defuse the bomb in time so that the deadly explosion failed to occur. As a result of the trap and betrayal committed by Lawson, Banks and his group now decide to immediately hunt down and eliminate Lawson. Banks then ordered his hacker named Geary to track Lawson's whereabouts through a tracking device that he had previously slipped into Lawson's clothes. You son of a bitch! That is right, man. Then, the scene moves to Rhodes, who is currently having a picnic with his daughter in the countryside, and is told that Rhodes's daughter is named Kim, and at that time, he will go to meet her friend. Shortly after her daughter left, Rhodes immediately prepared a weapon to hunt with a friend waiting in the forest. But not long after that, Rhodes got a call from a sheriff who asked him to come to the police station immediately because Kim was caught stealing from a convenience store. Meanwhile, at the police station, the sheriff can be seen interrogating Kim for stealing. But at the same time, Banks and his group came and asked the sheriff to help him find Lawson. It is known that Lawson is currently hiding in a forest, but the problem is that Banks' group does not know the access in and out of the forest. Meanwhile, it appears that Lawson is on his way to the border through the forest. Back to Rhodes, who had just arrived at the police station and saw two of Banks' men waiting outside. When Rhodes arrived at the police station, he was greeted at gunpoint by Banks' men named Dominica. The confused Rhodes then asked about what was really going on. Banks then replied that he had come to ask the sheriff for help finding a man hiding in the forest in the city. But because the sheriff refused to help him, they were forced to take over the police station and seize the people inside, including Kim, Rhodes' daughter. Then, after Rhodes found out about the situation, he tried to offer help to find Lawson, but on the condition that Kim and the sheriff were released first. Banks also agreed to the offer from Rhodes, and he would release Kim later, but not the sheriff, who was immediately killed by Banks. <laughs> Then, a bank subordinate entered, and immediately pointed a gun at Rhodes from behind, but Rhodes could quickly turn the situation around. Unfortunately, the gun turned out to be empty, so Rhodes was forced to obey orders from Banks, because if he refused, then his daughter's life would be at stake. Here, Rhodes deliberately did not tell them Kim was his biological daughter. God forbid you fuck us over. In short, they started hunting by taking Kim as a hostage, so that Rhodes wouldn't dare to mess around. While heading to the forest, they found Lawson's car along with the tracking device that Lawson had released, and that means that now they can no longer track Lawson's whereabouts in the forest. Don't need one. 
give away. It seems Kim is very scared because of the threats from the criminals, but her father continues to strengthen Kim and says that soon they can escape. While they were on their way, Kim was seen asking Dominica for permission to urinate briefly. But shortly after that, Rhodes heard a scream from Kim, which turned out to be Kim about to be raped by one of Banks' group. And of course, this made Rhodes very angry. Then he mercilessly beat the man. Then Banks, who knew that this chaos was caused by members of his group, immediately ordered one of his group, Jensen, to finish him. <laughs> then Banks, who began to suspect that Rhodes had a close relationship with Kim, pretended to want to shoot Rhodes. At the same time, Kim, who saw that her father would be treated like that, immediately reflexively called him dad. It was from here that the group finally began to find out that Kim and Rhodes were actually father and daughter. After the chaos was over, and amid a search that was getting further and further away, a new chaos began by the hacker, where the hacker who was used to working behind the scenes this time, complained of being tired, and also ran out of drinking water. While Jensen, who did not like the hacker's behavior, teasingly offered his urine for the hacker to drink. Of course, this made the hacker emotional, until a fight broke out between them. While the fight was going on, Rhodes, who saw an opportunity, told Kim to run away immediately. But unfortunately, Banks managed to thwart the action, and here Banks threatened to finish off Rhodes and Kim if they dared to act again. That I am not fucking then, after walking all day now, they decided to rest. Then, when everyone was sound asleep, Rhodes tried to untie Kim's hands, but unfortunately, the action was caught by Jensen, who immediately hit Rhodes on the head. The next day they continued their search to the Canadian border because they believed that Lawson would lead there. Then, while on the way, Rhodes found a map that was apparently used by Lawson to light a campfire, which means Lawson's current whereabouts are not far from where they are today. Then, when the hacker was resting in a tree, he was shocked by the discovery of a corpse, and it turned out to be the corpse of Rhodes's friend who was hunting in the forest. After investigating the corpse, Rhodes concluded that Lawson had killed his friend because he was felt to be one of Banks's group sent to kill him. After that, they continued their search, and in the end, they managed to find Lawson, who was lying in a tree. Lawson looks weak and injured because it is known that he had fought with Rhodes' dead friend. Then Banks, without further ado, immediately asked about the money from the robbery. However, even in such conditions, Lawson still did not want to open his mouth. He instead mocked them as a group of dumb robbers who were easily tricked. Of course, this made them very angry, even Dominica, who was very angry, and then killed Lawson on the spot. After that, Banks and his group seemed to lose enthusiasm for finding the money, but Kim suggested they look for it around the river because Lawson might have hidden it there. Kim did this on purpose to help them, so that she and her father would not be killed because they were considered useless. Sure enough, in the end, they managed to find the money, but the location of the money was right on the edge of the cliff. When none of Banks's group dared to take it, Rhodes took advantage of this opportunity by making an offer. Rhodes was willing to go down to take the money, but on condition that they release Kim first. But at that time, Banks refused the offer, and he would only release Kim if the money was already in his hands. He's made it. After struggling to climb the steep cliff of the ravine, Rhodes finally managed to take the money. But after the money was in Banks' hands, suddenly, Banks shot at Rhodes, and Jensen cut the rope and made Rhodes fall down the cliff. After that, when Banks was about to finish off Kim, Kim suddenly said that she knew a shortcut to get out of the forest. Banks, who heard that, then discouraged his intention to finish off Kim and took Kim to guide him out of the forest. On the way out of the forest, Kim is approached by Geary, who invites her to have a relationship because Geary is attracted to Kim's beautiful face. Kim rejected Geary, however, and caused Geary to become very angry. Geary immediately beat Kim mercilessly, but Dominica defended Kim and immediately beat Geary. Because they were fed up with Geary's behavior, Banks and his group then left Geary alone. So long, loser. Meanwhile, it turns out that Rhodes is still alive and immediately hides to recover from his gunshot wound. He took a backpack of spare supplies and found a crossbow. In the evening, Banks and the others decided to rest since they had been walking for so long and starving. But just as they were about to eat the supplies, Jensen said that all the food supplies were in Geary's backpack. Meanwhile, the surviving Geary is seen relaxing with a very abundant food supply. But because he was alone in the middle of the forest, Geary also became wary if a wild creature came to attack him. Meanwhile, Rhodes was seen making some arrow equipment to be used as weapons against Banks and his group. After preparing the weapons, Rhodes immediately moved to counterattack Banks and his members. 
starting from eliminating Geary, who is currently separated from his group. Rhodes shot Geary with his crossbow. After knowing that Kim was being taken to the border, Rhodes immediately finished off Geary. The next day, as Banks and the others continued their journey, Kim felt strongly that her father was still alive. Based on her belief, Kim made a clue so that her father could find her whereabouts. On the way, Jensen is seen stopping to light a cigarette while the others continue walking. Knowing that Jensen was separated from Banks, Rhodes then appeared in front of Jensen so that the fight ensued. It turns out that Jensen is not an opponent that can be underestimated. He can repeatedly beat back Rhodes, who has a bigger body. But in the end, Rhodes managed to finish Jensen off by stabbing a log into Jensen's body. Then Banks and Dominica called out to Jensen, but there was no answer at all from Jensen. In the end, Banks and Dominica decided to leave Jensen. Meanwhile, Kim is very sure that her father has succeeded in killing Jensen. After walking quite far, when they had almost reached the Canadian border, suddenly Rhodes appeared carrying a large log, which was thrown at Banks. However, the log hit Dominica and killed her instantly. An emotional Banks then threatened to kill Kim if Rhodes still bothered him. Banks then tried to shoot Rhodes until Rhodes was cornered and had to fall into the ravine. Then Banks forced Kim to take him to the close border. Meanwhile, Rhodes was seen who managed to get up and immediately continued to pursue Banks. But apparently, Banks and Kim had reached the border, and there, Banks immediately killed several people who were camping. After that, Banks, who ran out of bullets and ran out of time, decided to knock Kim out while he escaped on a motorbike. Then, shortly thereafter, Rhodes was seen who had arrived there, and he immediately told Kim to get help. Then, after Banks had reached the settlement, he had to hide immediately because he had heard the sound of approaching vehicles. But after Banks knew that it was Rhodes who was chasing him, Banks quickly tried to escape. Finally Banks escaped to a warehouse, but fortunately, Rhodes managed to find Banks' whereabouts, and a fierce duel ensued there. It's all you got, motherfucker. After Rhodes managed to beat Banks, he then left while carrying the money bag. Shortly after Kim came to see her father, Banks was seen alive. He even cursed Kim with bad words in front of Rhodes, which obviously made Rhodes even more angry. Rhodes then finished Banks off by crashing a motorbike into him, and then blowing it up. In the end, Banks dies a horrible death, and now Rhodes manages to save his daughter, and the movie is over. Don't forget to click subscribe, like, and comment.